Hey guys, I'm so excited. Today we are talking all about chronic pain. We have Rick Alderman and we are talking about fixing you, how to eliminate pain without medication. And I don't know about you, but this year I've had more joint pain than I've ever had in my entire life. So I'm super excited about today's episode. So Rick, welcome. Thanks for having me. I, I'm excited <laughs> to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Well, literally this year, I've had more joint pain than I've ever had. I My dad's actually a medical doctor. He's an internal medicine doctor. And I literally was like, you've got it. Like, I think I'm like, do I have MS? Do I have this? Do I have that? I'm like, we have to get myself tested because I have knee pain. I have... um just hip pain. I just feel like every joint in my body hurts right now. So let's talk a little bit about where is this chronic pain coming from and all of the kind of inflammation that's going on in our bodies. Yeah. So uh, my approach to solving pain is different than most traditional physical therapists in that uh, we are trained in this idea of component thinking where Oh, you've got hip pain? Here, let's look at your hip. You've got knee pain? Let's look at your knee. And that works well for more acute types of pain, tears, strains, things like that. But when it's a chronic issue, usually we have to think more in a systems standpoint. For instance, you've got hip pain? Let's look at how you're walking and using your whole lower body system that may be uh, affecting that vulnerability that you have in your hip. Same with knee, neck pain, elsewhere. So my whole approach is is understanding the body as a system rather than just this component thinking that we're trained in in PT school. Does that help? Yeah, so so one of the things that I am really against is like Tylenol. It's so funny because my mm. husband will say to me all the time like he'll be like, "Well, do you want some t-? like I'll be like, "Oh my gosh, this hurts me or that hurts me." He's like, "Here, take some Tylenol or take some Advil." And I literally will not do it. And I just, because in my opinion, it's like, it just is masking the problem. Like, okay, yeah, I'm going to take Advil or take Tylenol, but I've got to figure out what the root cause is. So for example, let's say someone has knee pain. What's the first thing that, and they've got maybe inflammation, swelling around the knee. What's the first thing that you're going to do? Well, uh, you know, first of all, I want to know, hey, has that knee pain, is this a new thing, you know, within a few weeks, or is this an old thing that you've been wrestling with for months? So if it's a new thing, then it's likely due, especially if there's swelling, it's due to some recent mechanical irritation to that knee likely, right? But if it's like a sprain or you tripped, twisted it, did something wrong, and now it's inflamed and angry, maybe you tore something. But if it's a chronic issue, then uh, that tells me that how you're using your body is causing stress to this knee. And so the way that uh, I look at things is if you come in for knee pain, well, any, basically anything from the foot up to the rib cage, you get a complete lower body and pelvic exam. And while that sounds like it would take forever, um, I've really distilled it down into some very simple tests. But basically what I'm looking at is, okay, you're telling me that your knee is the vulnerable part of your leg. But you know, there, there's only one muscle in the knee that controls the knee. All the rest of the muscles are coming from the pelvis and hip area or from the foot and ankle area, and they cross into the knee joint. So if we're not looking at how you're using your pelvis or your foot, uh, then we're missing a big clue as to what's actually stressing that knee. And one of the other things that could be stressing the knee is actually the shape of your thigh bone. So not all thigh bones are shaped the same. Some have more rotation built into the thigh bone. So you could have a a thigh bone that's twisted outward, which is called a retroverted femur, or you could have a thigh bone that's twisted inward, which is called an antiverted femur. Most females have antiverted femurs, ones that are twisted inward. Well, if that's the case with you, the body doesn't do well with internal rotation like that. That increases compression at joints in the hip and the knee, especially in the shoulder joints. So then we have to look at, well, are you, do you have an an antiverted or inwardly twisted thigh bone? If you do, are you not controlling that well? 
So then we look at how you're controlling the shape of your thigh bone. So this is basically how I look at the body is we break it. We look at the whole system. We look at the components and how each of those components may be interacting, both from a musculoskeletal, a muscular standpoint, but also from a function and also a skeletal st standpoint too. So Hopefully you I didn't have geek a, out on you too much there. Yeah, so you've got a book out called Solving the Pain Puzzle. Yeah. And you basically are kind of talking about, listen, I've got 25 years as a physical therapist and here's where some of the main things that I've seen, right? So you're saying, okay, if you've got knee pain, what are like the top three things that you've seen? Okay, it's probably either this, this, or this, right? Yeah. Is that yeah. what you talk about? Kind of go over yeah. that. If you've I can go over that right pain. now. So, okay. so that book is actually cases. So I, I wrote six books about 15 years ago called the Fixing New Series. And those are for sale on Amazon. And that goes into all the biomechanics and exercises that I recommend that are causing most pain from head to toe. So it's broken down into different parts of the body. And so you can find whatever part of the body is hurting there and, and get one of those if you want. But the solving the pain puzzle is basically um, that's more case studies of patients I've dealt with and how I've solved their difficult pain issues using those principles. So those original books are about the principles themselves with a few little case studies to show, you know, ex as examples. But the solving the pain puzzle are actually the people that I've helped using these principles and talking about their stories and what solved their pain. All right. So there's a little switch on that. Now, going back to knee pain. So the top, let's say three things that would cause most knee pain that I see is that uh, when you're standing or walking, you're locking your knee straight. And so what happens is that tends to irritate. There's a little muscle behind the knee. Remember that I said that there's one muscle in the knee that controls the knee and that's called the popliteus muscle. So when we, and it's located behind the knee joint. So when we lock our knee, when we're standing or walking, it irritates that popliteus muscle. And what that popliteus muscle does when it gets irritated is it locks the knee into a rotated position because it controls rotation at the knee joint. Well, our body, while it's important for us to be able to move into rotation, it doesn't want to be locked there. And so this is one of the causes is if you simply start unlocking your knees when you're standing and walking, that will calm down that popliteus muscle and unlock the whole knee joint. So that's one thing. Another is uh, if you're if you do have an, for instance, you Chantel might have an antiverted femur, all right, one that's twist, twisted in. Well, if your butt muscles are weak, the butt muscles are external rotators of the thigh bone. If your butt muscles aren't turning on when you're walking or standing, then your thigh bone is rotating in excessively and too fast, which is then causing more compression and internal rotation of the knee joint. So weak butt muscles are the second cause of most problems. And then the third is usually a tight calf or soleus muscle area. The calf and soleus muscles cross the knee joint. And so when they're tight, the knee can't pass over the foot well. And what happens is that force of you moving forward either goes down into the foot causing plantar fasciitis, or the foot will throw it back up to the knee or the hip to cause more knee or hip pain. So tight calf and soleus muscles would be the third thing I would suspect is, is your problem. Do you guys want to drastically improve the quality of your sleep? Would you like to be bulletproof to stress? Then guess what? There is a Black Friday special happening right now, and this could be exactly what you need. If you're struggling with insomnia or muscle cramps like in your legs or constipated, then let me tell you what you need. Four out of five Americans are now magnesium deficient. Like it's crazy. And that's a really big problem because magnesium is involved in more than 600 biochemical reactions in your body. And here's what most people don't know. Just taking any old magnesium supplement is not going to solve your problem because the cheapest kinds, it's where your body can't absorb it. So absolutely not. Here's what you need to do. 
I exclusively recommend Magnesium Breakthrough, okay? It's the only one that has seven unique forms of magnesium that your body can actually absorb. Seven critical forms of magnesium. That means that's exactly what you need for your brain, for your sleep, for your pain, inflammation, and less stress. So here's the great news. Black Friday, like this is the most incredible offer they're offering. From November 21st to the 29th, not only do you get magnesium breakthrough, but all of Bioptimizer's best-in-class products with an additional 25% off. So go to bioptimizers.com slash waste away. I'll put it in the show notes. Enter the code waste away to get 20 25% off any order. So it's a huge deal. And if you've arrived here late, don't worry, there's always a 10% off for listeners. So if you're listening and you're like, oh, this, you listen to this episode later, don't worry. I always give a 10% off for my listeners. Biooptimizers.com slash waste away with the code waste away. So one of the things that is kind of running rampant right now. I actually, <clears throat> I thought I stubbed my toe and my middle toe is like completely, they call it sausage toe. That's how much it's kind of inflamed. So I went to the doctor and he's like, no, it's not broken. He said, it's psoriatic arthritis. <clears throat> so I said, okay. And he's like, you need to go see a rheumatoid arthritis specialist. So I literally, and they're like, but they're literally five to six months behind. That's how long it would take for you to go see a rheumatoid arthritis specialist. So do you feel like if somebody has like psoriatic arthritis or something like that, could your books help with that? Or is that something that would be more of an internal problem and you wouldn't be able to help with that? Yeah, so this is a great question and I get this a lot. So uh, I get the same question, whether it's psoriatic arthritis, disc herniations, you know, uh, spinal stenosis, you know, anytime, does, do my books help with those conditions? Well, my books aren't, I'm not gonna say that my books are curing psoriatic arthritis because that is an internal system problem that you're having. You're having an inflammatory issue regarding your joints. My information is removing stressors to those joints. So if you have a herniated disc or psoriatic arthritis or spinal stenosis or anything anything like that, it's not going to cure those structural problems. What we're doing is removing hammers from those structural problems by getting you to use your body better. And often that's all that's needed to relieve the pain. What you care about is not maybe so much the, the fact that you have psoriatic arthritis, but the fact that it hurts. And if we can get rid of the pain, then you're okay, right? Maybe you'll do some other treatment to address the psoriatic arthritis. Maybe you have you know, a, a, a dietary issue that's causing internal inflammation or things like that. However, what you care about is getting rid of that pain. And that's what my information does is it removes the biomechanical hammers from your body that are hammering the vulnerable areas in your body. So one of the things you talk about is a unique tapping technique. Talk about that and kind of show us on screen what kind of tapping can you do that helps with pain management? Hmm. Well, uh, the tapping technique that I use in my clinic, I, I'm just curious where this question is coming from, Chantel. What tapping technique, uh, do you have information about a tapping technique that I'm using? Because I don't typically use tapping techniques. I do use one in my clinic, but I haven't used that for years and years. Oh, so I just, I'm, I saw it. I saw. Oh, it's a taping it was, technique. Yes. It's taping. All right, yes. T-A-P-I-N-G, not two P's. Yes, correct? taping, sorry, taping. sorry, not tapping, okay. taping All right. technique. Okay, so <laughs> I was just like, whoa, that's catching me <laughs> out from left field. All right, but I do use tap uh, tapping technique, but uh, I haven't used that in years. The taping techniques that I've developed, so basically, once you understand how the body works as a system and you identify people's vulnerabilities, 
you have to understand that those vulnerabilities exist because the brain isn't controlling the body well enough to solve those. All right. It doesn't a know what to solve first, and it doesn't know how to solve it because you haven't taught it to. So what I've used, I've developed unique taping techniques to support the body to unload stress to tissues until your brain can figure out what it needs to do. For instance, you mentioned your psoriatic arthritis uh, pain in your toe. So what I would then look at is, well, do you happen to have flat feet or do they look like they're collapsing in? Or if, if, you're, if your butt muscle isn't working when you're walking and everything is rotating in, it's putting excessive force into that foot that's causing that toe to become irritated. Or is your calf and soleus muscle too tight, which is also transmitting too much force into your foot and ankle? So I've developed a unique taping technique that would that very precisely lifts the arch of your foot in a spiral fashion, similar to what's what would counter the forces coming down from your pelvis into your foot. So it's a very simple technique, but I use taping to bridge function to get people out of pain immediately and show them, hey, this is how good your body would feel if your brain was controlling things well. And then we stretch or strengthen or change habits that are control that are causing all these problems. And then once you control those better or, or fix those tighter, weak muscles, you can wean yourself from taping. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you don't have to tape anymore. But it, it serves as a, as a beautiful bridge to get people out of pain really quickly and show them exactly what the problem is that they need to solve. So if you've been enjoying the show, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you're listening to. Take a screenshot of it and email it to questions at chantalrayway.com. The first 15 people who do that will get an amazing free gift. You will get an exclusive interview of the Thin Eaters and what they do to stay thin and make sure they stay in trim top shape. Go to Apple Podcasts, take a snapshot of it, email it to questions at chantalrayway.com and I'll send you your gift. And if you don't feel like making the review and you want to pay $79 to get this video, it is well worth it. Just go to chantalrayway.com and download it and buy it. So you have kind of different videos from what I understand. So like if you've got back pain or you've got hip pain or knee pain or foot pain, you have these programs that say, okay, watch these videos and you can actually fix yourself without going to a, you know, physical therapist on a weekly basis. Cause you're, you're out of Denver, right? Correct. Yeah. People, there's not going to be that many. Some people might listen and say, okay, I'm flying to Denver to go skiing anyway. Let me go pop by and see him. But majority of the people you're helping them all online. Absolutely. Uh, my belief is that, you know, I'm not the one who caused your pain. You're in some way contributing to your own pain. So my programs help you figure that out because, I mean, I, I won't be there all the time for you, Chantel, to tape your foot for you, right? Wouldn't it be better if you just knew how to tape your own foot and could do that yourself or fix all these problems that were irritating your knee or your psoriatic arthritis in your toe? So that's what I believe should be happening is that I should give the power to you because you're ultimately the one who's controlling your own body. Yeah. So are you talking, you're mostly talking about like KT tape, right? Is that the kind no. of tape you're talking about or no? No, the KT tape, that's nice. They've done a great job marketing, but what I'm talking about is making major, controlling major problems in the body. And if you've ever worked with KT tape, that's very stretchy tape. That's not going to really control anything. It's maybe going to guide something, but it's not going to control something that's out of control. So I use a combination that's two tapes called Cover Roll Stretch and Leukotape P. Incredibly strong tape that can be worn for even a week, even when you shower or swim with it on. It's very strong, but it's designed to control bigger problems that you can't control. And that's, that's the tape that I've settled on that I feel is the best tape to control things like a foot and ankle flattening problem or a shoulder blade problem or a knee problem or things like that. So name that tape again for people who are listening that want to. Yeah, it, it's called cover roll stretch and leukotape P L E U K O T A P E. And then the letter P. And if you go on Amazon, they, they now sell it as a 
package of a one pack of color cover roll and one pack of leukotape P. They, they sell it together now, which is great. So what you do is you lay the cover roll stretch down because that sticks to your skin really well. The leukotape P doesn't stick to your skin really well. And then you put the leukotape P over the cover roll stretch because that sticks to cover roll stretch really well. And the leukotape P is like a fabric. It's such a strong tape. So you need both of those to control uh, and, and that layered system to control a joint that you're trying to control well. Mm, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah. So, so in the video, let's say like for me, I have knee pain. Sure. So you would show exactly in the video how you would tape someone's knee so that you're not like further damaging it. Is that what Correct. I'm hearing you say? Yeah, but uh, I mean, there's only one taping technique for the knee, but really that taping technique is to get you to stop locking your knee, right? So the more effective taping technique that you would use, uh, that I would use for you if you had knee pain would be the foot taping technique, which is also found in the knee pain video. So uh, in the home program, I mean, because I, I've included everything that I think is going to solve that knee pain, everything that's feeding from the foot to the hip, to your walking pattern, to all of, all of these things that you're doing that need support, I've included that in the knee pain program. Same with the hip pain. So you'll get, there's overlap, of course, because, you know, this is our body works as a system. So there is some overlap between the hip pain program, the knee pain program, and the back pain program, and the foot pain program, because that's all about fixing a system of problems. So you're saying, yeah, so you're saying for me, if I had knee pain, probably the the biggest reason why I might have knee pain is because I'm locking my knee out when I'm walking. Is that correct? Is that what I'm hearing you say? That's, that's, that, yes, that's probably the biggest reason because what that's doing is turning off key muscles in your whole lower body system that should be operating optimally when you're walking. And now that you're locking your knee, it turns all of those guys off. And so does the it, tape help you stop locking out your knee? Yeah, it serves as a little reminder for you because you're going to get this little pull from the tape every time you lock your knee. You're going to be like, oh, there I go again. So because this is an unconscious habit that you have, Chantel, your brain will never pay attention to it as often as it should when you're trying to solve it. So the tape serves as that reminder, that little nagging friend that's going to be tapping on your shoulder all the time. Instead of you trying to remember, because you're too busy to think about these things, mm -hmm. right? You need little reminders to help you. And the tape serves as a perfect reminder to get you to stop locking that knee. Mm, wow. Does that make sense? Oh, interesting. Yes, it's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Well, so been... your brain doesn't know what to do yet. You have to teach it what to do. And once your brain, once you start taping the back of that knee and stop locking it out and your knee starts to feel better, then your brain's going to stop judging that as a weird bad movement. And it's going to say, oh, this is something I need to do. I'm going to remember to do this. And that's when a new habit starts to get laid down. So if you had to say, <clears throat> you know, my number one, like when people come to see me out of every pain, what's the number one thing that people see you for? And what's the number one healing for that that problem would it yeah, be back uh, pain or oh yeah back and sciatic pain would be the the biggest one and second would be hip and third would be neck pain and headaches so it, well, let's talk about sciatic pain for a second um, sure what what is the cause of that sciatic pain and what's the the top cures that you teach people in your program yeah so you have to understand that there are three patterns of dysfunction that contribute to almost all back or sciatic pain. And most, and, uh, but really there's only two of them that exist in most people. One is that the back is too arched. And the other is that one side of the pelvis is higher than the other and the rib cage is lower, which then creates compression on that side of the spine. And so with sciatic pain or back pain that's on one side of the body, this is the primary pattern that we'll need to solve, right? If you have central low back pain, usually it's the first pattern, that two arch pattern. So 
if we go to that sciatic pain question again and say, okay, well, let's say I have a higher pelvis on one side and a lower rib cage on the other. The cause of that happening is usually some problem in that same leg. So your brain, once again, is trying to get you off of that problem. Let's say it's your psoriatic arthritis, okay, in that middle toe that you have. So you walk around on that and it's really bothering you, right? You're able to do what you need to do, but gosh darn it, that's really annoying. Well, guess what your brain's going to do? It's going to say, oh, we need to get off of that because that's painful. So what it's going to do is gradually over time, start lifting that pelvis up. Well, the muscles that lift the pelvis up also attach to the rib cage. So they're going to pull the rib cage down. And so you create this side bending problem that, okay, this began as psoriatic arthritis, but now six months later, you've developed sciatic pain in the leg. Well, where did that come from? And you don't know how to link that sciatic pain to your psoriatic arthritis which is the original problem. And this is what happens with a lot of people is that they have these old injuries, maybe that they've compensated for over the years. And so their body, their brain has helped them get around those, but the compensations that they've created have caused different types of pain in their bodies. Hey guys, I really want you to join our Intermittent Fasting and OMAD Facebook group. We're doing tons of giveaways right now for posting your before and after pictures and just for posting a question in there. We're giving away free protein shakes, some digest aid, all kinds of fun stuff. So please join our Intermittent Fasting and OMAD Facebook group. The link is in the show notes. Let's let's talk about ibuprofen and let's talk about Advil because one of the things that I believe that people are abusing is Advil and, and Tylenol. And, you know, my husband will give me a hard time. He'll be like, I mean, I could have like a migraine headache. That's like unbelievable. And he'll be like, don't even try to talk her into taking Tylenol. I, I take it like probably about four to six times a year when I'm like dying on the vine Um, but I save it for those times, you know, if I just have a regular headache or I'm in, you know, some pain, but I do think that people are really abusing it to the 10th degree. So talk about what people can do. Obviously the first thing they need to do is figure out the root cause and figure out the pain, but is there any other things that they can do instead of running to, um, you know, Tylenol or Advil for the inflammation? Yeah, well, first of all, I just have to tell you that most migraines are caused by the shoulder girdle system. And I can explain that to you if you want to understand that. Yeah, explain However, that. Okay, well, let's let's go back to your my, your Tylenol Advil thing. Okay. So I'm, I'm right on, on par with you, Chantel. I think it should be used very sparingly. So it should only be used in those times when, gosh, I really need some help out of this. If you're taking this stuff chronically, then what you're doing, like you said, is you're kind of masking the problem. You're avoiding solving the root causes of all of this stuff. And you're going to pay for that because those root causes will not go away. They're going to get deeper and deeper the more that you ignore them over the years. This is why they're happening in the first place is because You've ignored something going on in your body. Uh, And so now your body's saying, hey, uh, you've got to solve this. And and if you don't, I'm just going to get worse. And so that's what chronic pain is. It it does. Chronic pain rarely gets better on its own. It almost always gets worse on its own. And that's why. So I'm, I'm with you that if you're popping these things daily or weekly because of pain, well, you're going to ruin your insides in your digestive tract. And, you know, maybe you'll develop some other, you know, digestive issues or or gut issues. Why not just take the time to start solving the problem in the first place? Okay. So that's my take on the. Well, and let me say this, that you, you continuing to take that Advil and Tylenol is that's like one of the leading liver disease causes. So besides alcohol, right after that, it's like, and and then it people who take alcohol on top of taking the Tylenol, talk about your your liver cannot handle that, and yeah. you are going to have major major liver problems. 
Yeah, and I, I just just to expand on this further, a lot of people are taking these drugs because they haven't found pain relief yet. Why haven't they found pain relief? And it's because we as medical pro professionals have been taught in this component thinking way of solving pain. Oh, you've got migraines, let's look at your head and maybe your neck. Oh, you've got back pain, let's look at your back and maybe your pelvis. But we're not, we're not trained to look at things from a systems standpoint, which is what you and I have been talking about this whole time, right? And this is why I truly believe we have chronic pain is because we're not looking at things from a system standpoint. So you might be thinking, well, no one's been able to help me, so I've got to take these drugs. Well, no one's been able to help you yet because of how they were trained. They're following their training instead of the systems approach that I've developed over these last two plus decades. So it really is very powerful for solving chronic issues. And so that's, you know, it's not that, I don't think people are taking the drugs because they want to be taking the drugs. I think they're taking them because they haven't found solutions otherwise. And this is the only thing that can take the edge off. I don't blame them for that, but now you're, now hopefully you're aware that, oh, there's another way of looking at all of this. Yes, there is. So let's go back to your migraine idea, all right? So I, I mentioned that migraines are often caused by shoulder girdle system problems. So this is, again, the system. Anyone who comes into my clinic with headaches, neck pain, shoulder issues, we start looking from the pelvis all the way up to the top of the head. Well, one of the big causes of most chronic neck pain and headaches is, that, uh, the, is the shoulder girdle system. So if you look at the pelvis, you'll see that the, the bones here are broad and flat. Other bones in the body are long right? Very different than the pelvic bones. The only other area of the body that has a broad flat bone like that is the shoulder blade, all right? The pelvis is the center of function for the lower body and back system. The shoulder blade is the center of function for the upper body and neck system, all right? There are huge muscles controlling this whole thing, but there's a little muscle that goes from the shoulder blade into the uh, neck bones here that when the whole system isn't working well, stress is transmitted to, through that muscle to these neck bones, which causes neck pain and migraine headaches, all right? So fixing the shoulder blade, will then getting this whole system to work better, unloads that little tiny muscle that's going to the neck bones and the head and resolves neck pain and headaches. Especially if you have unilateral head pain, like migraines or neck pain, this is probably the cause of your migraine headaches. Mm, so interesting. Well, this has been wonderful. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you and learn more about these platforms that you have. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, to make it easy, if you go to rickolderman.com, R-I-C-K-O-L-D-E-R-M-A-N.com, it has all my home programs. And if you type in, if you end up buying something, uh, if you type in fixing you, F I X I N G Y O U, all one word in the coupon code, you'll get 20% off. But if you go there, there, I've also got some free stuff for you. I've got some chapters from my upcoming book, Solving the Pain Puzzle, that you can either read or listen to me read. And I've also developed an online training program for health and wellness practitioners, from coaches to surgeons, to understand the system's way of looking at the body to solve pain. And so that fixing you code also works if you want to buy that and study it. Uh, you get 20% off that training program as well. Mm, love it. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much for your wisdom and all that you're doing for the health community. And you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye bye for now.